So is it not important? We are thinking about the eternal welfare of your soul. It is either salvation and glory or it is absolute, total, eternal loss of your soul. So if this matter then is so important, and I hope you see the importance tonight at the start of this meeting, I hope you see the importance of the matter. Is it not then important that whatever you have for eternity is based upon something that is trustworthy, that is based upon truth, and not based upon a lie? Does it not make sense? If I took, my friend, if I took some kind of a magazine that somebody wrote somewhere maybe down in the U.S. I never met the person, but I heard about the person, some kind of a man, well-educated. And he writes something concerning the great eternity, which a man never saw. He doesn't know anything else about that than me. But he wrote some beautiful, wonderful magazine with all kinds of stuff in it. And I'm reading this. I say, oh, this looks good. Or my friend, if I now had, on the other hand, another choice. If I could look at the Bible that comes from the mouth of God who inhabits eternity. He is there. He knows what is in heaven. He knows the way there. And I am presented with this choice. There's the writings of men, or there is the word of God. Which one, friend, would we trust? Should we trust? Which one would you rather trust? So what I want to get at tonight is this, friend. There are all kinds of ideas out in this world presented by different organizations, religions, creeds of what any, whatever kind. They are presented to us. Somebody told me recently that there is over 3,000 different religions in this world. The ideas of men, 3,000 plus religions that all differ somewhere. There's not two that are the same, at least not completely the same. There are differences there. Friend, there is so much presented to us to confuse our mind. And one to the other is different, differing. So when we think about this tonight, would it not make sense, friend, to look for instructions how to get to heaven? to look for information regarding eternity, regarding life and death, regarding my life and my death and my eternity for my soul, would it not make sense to ask someone or to look into the writings of someone who knows about it? Or would you rather take the ideas and writings of men that are all different, I would like tonight, I only have a few minutes left, but this is one point that I really have on my heart tonight. And after that, you listen to the preaching of the gospel and you make a decision tonight concerning the offer of mercy that God presents in His Word. We read several passages together. I would like to look at them just briefly. Here's Pilate. He asked, well, what is truth? And it would do you good tonight to ask this question, what is truth when it comes to eternity, going to heaven or going to hell? What is the truth? What did the Lord Jesus say in John chapter 17? Here's the Son of God in prayer to God the Father. And He is saying, I have given them, that's his disciples, I have given them thy word. Thy word is truth. 
What was it that Pilate asked? What is truth? He asked. What is it? What is truth? Here's what the Son of God has to say about truth. Thy word. Thy word is truth. Just quickly, think about what the Apostle Paul, so greatly used of God in the proclamation, the preaching, the teaching of the gospel message, so greatly used in the teaching of New Testament truth regarding God's assembly. What does Paul say concerning the word of God? Remember what Christ said, thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. The Apostle Paul, he writes, guided by the Spirit of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for different things. All Scripture, not part of it, but all of it. <coughs> all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That just means that God gave it not the ideas of men. God gave us His Word. We have it in the Bible today. The Lord Jesus said about the Word of God, Thy Word is truth. Here's the Apostle Paul. He says, All Scripture from cover to cover given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable. We're using it tonight to present to you what God wants you to have. And that is eternal life. Again, think about what Paul is writing now to Titus. Still, it's not his own idea. Inspired, guided by the Spirit of God, he writes to Titus about God. He writes about everlasting life. What Paul had himself, he didn't have it all his life. He was saved. He had a moment when he received it. When he received eternal life as a free gift from God. And now he is writing, guided by the Spirit of God, concerning this everlasting life, this gift, that God cannot lie. I won't go back. The Lord Jesus said about the Word of God, Thy Word is truth. The Apostle Paul says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable. He says, God cannot lie. He is absolutely trustworthy. God will not mislead anyone. He will not. Let's move ahead. Just a few minutes left. What does Peter say? 2 Peter chapter 1. Concerning the prophecy. They did not follow the apostles. Friend, listen to this. The apostles, when they taught, when they preached, when they made known unto the world the great offer of mercy that God has for the whosoever regarding the Christ, the Lord Jesus, that He wants to be the Savior of sinners, He wants to be your Savior tonight. When they taught concerning the Lord Jesus and everything that was surrounding Him and His doctrine, they did not follow cunningly devised fables. They did not follow lies and the teachings of men. But what they had was a more sure word of prophecy. Here are these eyewitnesses that surrounded the person of Christ. And here is Peter, who spent time with the Lord, who was dealt with by the Lord Jesus, who was a saved man, and he wasn't always. And he says concerning the scriptures that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Spirit of God. Friend tonight, what are we looking at when we open the Bible and we read the things that it tells us? What are we looking at? What would you say? Now you don't have to tell me in the meeting here tonight. I'd love to hear from you outside, maybe afterwards. <coughs> but you don't have to. I'm not going to ask you either. But what are you thinking about the Word of God, the Bible? 
Think again, please. Friend, think again. What did the Lord Jesus say about it? Thy word is truth. Now, when it comes to the eternal welfare of your soul, where you will be in eternity, when this life is done, what would you want to base that on? On the word of God? Or on something else? I want to tell you something. A little over 11 years ago, March the 9th, 1999, after reading the Bible for myself, about a year and a half or so, and after having listened to the gospel simply preached from the Bible, not from any prayer book or some other kind of a book. And I could follow it. I could see it for myself in the Bible, the living Word of God. Four nights of meeting. God was dealing with me. And I saw for myself that God told me in His Word that I was a sinner before Him. A religious sinner. I was going to church. But I saw for myself from the Word of God that I was a sinner and I was going down to hell. Never saved. I was never saved. But then March the 9th, 1999, in the evening, lying in my bed in Mrs. Tickner's house, reading the Word of God, John 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friend, you know what I did? I simply took God at His word. And I put the eternal welfare of my soul into His hands, building upon what He said in His Word, giving me the promise that if I trusted Christ and His work, that is, His death on Calvary's cross, to pay for my sin, that He was my substitute, and bear the punishment that I deserve. That he simply, I can't make any simpler than this, that he died for me, the guilty sinner. I took God at his word that that is truth. That it is trustworthy. That it is a promise from God that he has recorded in the Bible for me. I took him at his word. And that moment I was saved. God gave me a peace I never had before. God gave me the gift of God, eternal life, which I never had before. God gave me a contentment, a new life that I never had before. A moment of salvation. Friend, tonight, I base my eternity upon the Word of God. It is truth. It is trustworthy from cover to cover. How can you tell me tonight that you're saved and some do here and you have trouble believing that the word of God is true in other places? Something wrong there. Think about it as the meeting continues and as you will listen to the gospel preached. The word of God, the Lord Jesus said, thy word is truth. Uh, it's great to see each one tonight. Thanks for coming. Lord willing, meeting here 